Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys Are Riding. Today Rob and I are here at the Minneapolis uh, Boat Show and we're here with Tony. And Tony, what do we have behind us right here? What we have here is a 1964 Iola molded plastics Apache. Um, okay, hang on a minute. So IMP. Yes. Uh, the, the abbreviation. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever heard of one. They were around for six or seven years. They're okay. super rare now. Um, the company started off by basically copying a Redfish boat company design, and they basically pulled molds off of Redfish so, uh, models. So, so how would they have done that? I don't understand the process specifically, but basically you take one of their boats, you spray it with something, and you basically come up with the negative of the boat, and that's your mold. Oh. And then you pull that off, and then you spray your fiberglass into okay. that, and now you've got your, now you got your hull. Wow. So uh, that, okay, that that's really interesting. So it's a it's in some ways it was a knockoff of another boat. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. <laughs> okay. Now there's a special story about this because this is yours. You restored it. I but have. whose was it before you? My dad purchased this from the side of the road in 1973. So, at that so time, it was used at the time, or was it a brand new? It was new? used. It okay. was nine years old at that time. Okay. And had to borrow money from his mom to buy this. And it was our family boat when I was growing up. Okay. Oh, boat. man. So you, you've ridden in this. Yes. As a kid. Yeah, and it was a boat I learned to drive a boat in. Uh, took the boater safety course when I was 12. Oh, so I could take wow. it up by myself. I learned how to water ski behind it. Um, man. We uh, grew what? up across Wisconsin, so it saw a lot of time on the Mississippi River. What a fantastic story. I mean, yeah. now, what, did it have this 100 horsepower Mercury 6 on it at the time? It did not. The original motor that came with this boat looks almost like this, but a little smaller. It was okay. a four-cylinder, inline, 65 horsepower Mercury. Okay. So you've upped the horsepower just a little bit. Yes. Okay. I do have the original sitting in my garage. Okay, you still have the original. Yes. But it would have it looked very similar to yes, what you Yes, just here. about uh, six inches shorter, seven inches shorter. Okay. So how... Wh well, it's 2022. Yes. So when did you finish the restoration? 2012. And when did you start the restoration? <laughs> Roughly. Well, <laughs> I know it's hard to remember back that long, but... Probably 2007, 2008. 20, okay. Wow. Wow. Okay, so it's... But, you know, these projects always take a while. Yeah. I mean, I mean they're never is... a quick fix. You're no. doing what you can. So so let's come up here and talk a little bit sure. because when you first got it out of your dad's sold it to you, gave it to you? So, I graduated from college in 1995, and my dad was tired of paying for storing this, yeah. uh, paying the monthly storage fee, so this is my graduation gift from college, ah. and it did not look like this. So dad figured, I, I give him a gift, plus I get rid of some. Exactly. Okay. And it, it was in rough, rough shape at that point. Um, animals had gotten in here, ripped up all the upholstery. It did not have carpeting in. That's an ad that I did. Okay. Um, the gauges, all the chrome on this boat was all pitted out. Um, so I've had... It had to be pretty rough if the animals had been in it. Yeah. Um, the motor needed to be restored. The was trailer was... The wheels on the trailer... This is the original trailer, too. No, it's a, I've had, this is a, one I purchased for it. Okay. The original trailer, the wheels were kind of sticking out. They're Starting to become angle. wings? Yeah, kind of like wings. Uh, it's just like a modern, modern sports car look. I don't know what you were worried about. <laughs> was the windshield in, so, in, in, in good shape? No. Uh, the windshield was yellowing. Um, it had huge cracks in it. And um, what they did to make this windshield is they took my original windshield, used that as a mold, and then bent this piece of plexiglass, heated it up, and okay. bent it around my original windshield to make a copy of it. Now, um, so once you started the, the restoration, kind of tell us the process, because it wasn't like you, you stopped at Jimmy Joe's Red Bolt restoration and then picked it up six years later, right? This was piecemeal finding different people in different areas yeah, so that, that do specialties to do things. Imperial Boat Repair. Um, did I'd like to thank my wife <laughs> for allowing me this indulgence. No, okay, I'm joking. So for the boat itself, Imperial Boat Repair, um, handled a lot of the aspects. They did the, uh, they painted it, they fixed the fiberglass. They found me um, a, a, an upholster that matched, we tried to match the original upholstery as closely as possible. Okay. Um, so it did have this piping and, and white and kind of a cream color. Okay. So as far as the motor goes, there's a company up in Hayward called Classic Mercury Outboards. 
and um, the gentleman up there, he actually restored the original motor, which is the 65 horsepower we're talking okay, about. Okay, okay. And as soon as I picked that up, I'm like, hey, maybe can you do me <laughs> a favor and restore a 100 horsepower okay. 1964 um, motor for me? And it took a while. It took three or four years. Um, it's, it, he kind of does the winter time. Okay. Um, but I picked this up probably three years ago now and uh, love it. It's a, it really looks good in the bone, I think. It looks fantastic. It does have the original style um, pulley steering. No hydraulics on this. It's strictly manual okay. steering. There's basically a pulley on the back side of this steering wheel that these two cables wrap around. And as you turn the steering wheel, one cable unwinds and one cable winds, and then you repeat the process going the other way. This is basically the way all upwards were for a long time. And, you know, we mentioned in case you're one of those restorers and you're watching the video going, oh, his cables are loose. Well, yeah. what, what, tell us about that. <laughs> so I heard a little bit of a rush job to get this on and get this to the boat show. So uh, me and my nephew put this on about three weeks ago. Um, from the original 65 horsepower okay. and I do need to adjust. You can kind of see like one of the pulleys is going into one of the control cables yeah. here a little bit and it's so it needs it needs it needs some yeah. some more fine tuning but I'm that's have to tune it up a little bit in the springtime here. That that that's all part of the process, isn't it? The flag. The flag I found on eBay. Okay. Not. Did uh, you have a flag on here as as a child? No. That's no, a, but you would have had this light. Yes. So is that um, the original dome or is that actually It's glass. It's, it's glass. Yes. This is actually this is not original to the boat. Okay. It is a, it's a copy of what was original to the okay. boat. Um, this the top and the bottom of this on the original boat was too far gone. Okay. Um, this we found one and it's like finding hen's teeth on eBay. I think it was about <laughs> five or six hundred bucks just for that light. Um, uh -huh. I, I believe it's something yeah. that's rare. That yeah. that doesn't surprise me. Typically when you find these they call them uh, Jetsons lights because the top looks mm -hmm. like the, the, yeah, the Jetsons. Yeah, the Jetsons yeah. When you find these typically this is broken or missing. This glass piece up here. Yeah. Now if you didn't get that reference, Google Jetsons. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk for a minute about the gauges because I found this part absolutely just fascinating that you could do this in that year. So, yeah, so there is a company, uh, first of all, these gauges are original to the boat, okay. but the company that made these gauges is called Aquameter, and their whole concept, they're um, around in the 60s, and they're not around anymore, but um, the whole concept was these gauges are all modular, so you can basically snap in a speedometer here, you can st a barometer, um, tachometer, whatever you need. And then the next thing could be a cigarette lighter. You know, this is this was yep. the 60s, so everyone's smoking in their boats. Um, next gauge could be whatever you want. And they sold many different things, many different gauges, and they all just snap together. And then you, they also sold these end pieces here that are also modular to cover up the screw holes on the ends. So, I mean, that's what I found fascinating is that you could, in the 60s, you could customize your boat dashboard. Yes. In fact, you could buy a bunch of different and then just swap them out from year to year going, I'm tired of that. Yeah. I'm going to put this in this year. I thought my neighbors was a new boat. Exactly. I mean, if you're running you know, two outboards or something, you could have two tachometers. Um, you could put a clock in there, anything you want. That's just fascinating. Okay. Yeah. So underneath here, you have got uh, some storage underneath? Yes. Uh, just not a whole lot. No. Uh, well, you just put something you can throw, life jackets or a rope or an extra anchor or something yeah, in. Okay. That's where I typically put the anchor. Okay. And then, of course, you've got a horn. You've got one other button up here. What's that? Choke? Uh, those are lights. Oh, those so, are lights? Yeah. Okay. Your choke, would, yeah, that's back here then with the key, I'm assuming? Yes. This, this black button up here is the choke. Oh, that's the, the choke. Engine. Okay. And this is a high Doesn't choke with the key. Okay. Yep. High idle lever. So, actually very similar to, in some ways, other than the choke to boats from the 80s. Very similar. I mean, other I mean, than the choke, because I have the same setup, except for my keys might choke, you know, just by pushing. Okay. Merck stopped making, like, inline sixes like this, I think, 85-ish uh, or so. At first, I was going to say, wow, push start. <laughs> well, it is electric start. It is. It is electric start. Yes. So you yeah. have a battery. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the front here. Right. So you got you got uh, two cleats up in the front, of course, yes. for tying. This would have been for... Is that another, that's not another cleat so for tying necessarily, is it's it? It's basically to assist getting the rope from one side of the boat to the other, so it's not going over, you know. Ah, uh, not to keep it out of the way of the horns. Exactly, and the I windshield love, and everything. I love the dual horns. Yes, uh, I rebuilt, it's, there's an air pump underneath there. Okay. It took a little bit of finagling, but I got it just, it's one of the best sounding horns. And then this is the original light up here? Original light, All yes. original lights around, man. 
So, you rode in the boat. Yes. You learned to drive a boat from this boat. Yes. You learned how to ski in it. And then later, you inherited the boat. I did. By searching hard and finding different people who have different specialities, you managed to get the boat refinished and bring it back to this level of restoration. And now it's a drivable boat. Now it's a drivable boat. I, I'm a firm believer in driving stuff. So you're right. Not not a showpiece, yeah. right? I mean, it, it is just because of the boat it is. But I mean, you're out there using it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's like that's like collecting cars. If you're gonna collect them, go drive them. Exactly, man. Well, I, man, I tell you what, Tony, what an awesome story. And what an awesome boat. Thank you so much for taking your time to uh, visit with us and share this story with us. You're very welcome. Thanks for watching.